now. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Hammond! Carthus, Cassidy, and Chico. Let's go, let's go. Silence. Do you feel a chill? Look behind you. Wait, 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 wait. Hi, I'm Chia Court, and I play Vi. Punch first. Ask questions while punching. Hi, I'm Shida Kandeni, and I play Karma. Always trust your spirit. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gavin Hammond, and I am Varys. And I've always wanted to be a big. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa Hutchison, and I play Ash. Take a good look. It's the last you're going to get. Chuck Karuklis, and evidently the character ideal has been a subject of some consternation and confusion after finding the actor who did it. Can anybody take a guess? I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you this little hint. Hypnosis! 24 hour protection for your sweatiest and bloodiest battles! <laughs> yeah, I'm Brian Summer, and I provided the voices for Trigger, Warwick, uh, News, Yeti, Willem, and I was also the original announcer for the game. So, it's only fun if they run. <laughs> Fantastic. And the best part is that we have, we have a pretty good spectrum here. We have some of the original champions way back pre-beta before it was even a name to the game. Got some people halfway through, like the end of season one, the three seasons, uh, season two, and some new faces, the new kids on the block as well. So let's start at the beginning, where most things do start, before before law was even a thing, before the game was even completed. So this is more for uh, Adam, Owen, Brian, and Vanessa. So like, what, was, what was recording session like that early on? Did it seem anything special, it was just another normal day, and how long was it until you realized you were in this game? Um, I know you didn't mention my name, but I was Jax in the beginning, so... Oh, that's, 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 uh, <laughs> excuse me, AJ. Well, no, I just didn't want to get close to shoot up. Excuse me. Um, it was, it was as, as I'm sure the entire panel will tell you, you know, we, we do a lot of different video games, and it was another game but we we went in we did it and it was like it only had so many lines per character and uh and we like doing jacks i love jacks and i was like yeah 
let's go pound something. And uh, <laughs> so, so it was, it was just interesting. I was like, oh, okay, cool. It looks like a cool character. I did the session and then knew nothing of it. And about God, like four years later or something, uh, Adams got a hold of me and he's like, hey, uh, you know that League of Legends thing is like a big deal. And I was like, I, I don't know, what, what's the deal? And now we're what, five or six years into it and yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, I've said it before, I'm not sure, I doubt Riot even knew what they had on their hands uh, when we went in for those original sessions. Um, we did it at a place that um, all of us uh, do a lot of work at, a place called Somatone in Emeryville. And we do kind of, uh, I don't know, whoever was here for The Walking Dead before, I kind of cracked the joke about uh, doing a lot of Russian games and translating Russian. But this is the same place. Uh, so, you know, we, uh, everyone up here does a ton of video games. So it kind of gets to be a routine. Uh, four years later, fast forward, I build video game voiceover reels for actually a lot of people on the stage here. And I found this League of Legends thing, and, and I start looking a little deeper into it, and then boom, I was like, oh my God. And I started calling everybody and trying to find out who's in the game. Um, yeah, it, it turned into just this amazing ride that's still going. We, we meet people like uh, Brad down there, Mr. Pluto. Pluto! <laughs> <laughs> and of course you, AJ, and, and Christina, and, and everybody. And it's been an amazing ride. I, I don't even know where to begin uh, other than, I mean, just l look at the, the TF cosplay down there. Look at all of it. Yeah, yeah, gotta get some play. Bottom line, uh, I hope the ride never stops. Uh, keep playing the game, and uh, awesome. AJ, I'll give you the panel back. <laughs> so, now let's move a little bit further in. So, around uh, some, of the, some of the newer characters, like Eric, this would be when, when Draven comes in, uh, Christina, Chuck, and, and Gavin as well. So, games pick up seen, people are starting to play a little bit more. Like, did you start to realize this was a thing at the time? Um, how did you compare the sessions when you guys went in in comparison to what the experience is, the earlier? Uh, a much different time? experience uh, overall. Um, Jax, like I said, it was like, oh, okay, another game game. We don't know what it is. We have no idea. I like the character. But by the time I got to do Draven, I mean, I knew how popular the game was. I knew what was going on. And uh, when, I, when I finally got cast as Draven, I, I was so excited because... He called me up all excited. I, the, character, <laughs> the character is awesome. And, um, and I have a little bit of, of love for the old macho man. And uh, so for me, there was a lot of that there. You know, the, ooh, it rises to the top. And Draven is a lot like that, like, woo! Um, so, and, and that was a whole new experience, and there was, there was like a couple animations that you were working with, um, and there was more people on the line, you know, anytime you have people in your cans talking to you, you're like, oh, okay, there's, there's some interest, there's more people involved in the process. The first time I did it, there was maybe one guy on the phone, and I was there with the engineer. It was pretty simple. Uh, the second time, it was like, okay, wow. Uh, and, and they told me flat out, they were like, we really like this character, we love what you're doing with it, and... We want him to be kind of popular, hopefully. You know? Don't I mess think it up. He's very popular. I don't know. It's a little bit maybe. Uh, it depends on yeah. It really depends on who you ask it, and when I say who you ask it, everyone. You know, I I grew the game, um, but the moment for me where I realized how big it was was actually stepping on stage at IPL the first time when I saw how huge it was and seeing the numbers. So that was really the realization <coughs> for me. My recording session experience was, um, like you guys said, it's just very similar to to, um, to doing other video games. And it was at a studio that I work a lot. I kind of consider it my home base studio. It's called Bang Zoom. I work a lot there. And we recorded uh, the character, and I got a lot of positive feedback. And it was just kind of, it feels, it feels kind of like in and out. I can hardly remember anything um, about that session. I think it's one of those experiences where you are the character, so it's kind of like you do it. And then it's and then, yeah, so that, that was my experience. Because I think like one one thing I've heard a lot of you say too, as well, like before we do things like panels like this, is like, I can't remember my character's lines. <laughs> 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 I can't remember my character's Because I remember you told me that I feel a horse, I can't remember. That's what YouTube's great for. Yeah. Okay, that's what YouTube's great 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, my experience with Twisted Fate is that Adam, when he discovered how popular the game was, he was like, I, I bet you're in it. It's like, I'm not in it. I don't know what you're talking about. Man. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, uh, Stefanos Rex went on, went on my website, looked at my demo, heard a cowboyish voice I did, and then showed me the clip. He was like, this is you. Like, well, there it is. And same experience. We were all on stage together, and I did Twisted Fate's voice, and the audience went berserk. I was like, oh, this game is uh, got some... <laughs> you, had to go, you had to go in again for Victor, and then Twisted Fate got a, a remake. Yes, and I did all, every line from scratch again when I got a, a new skin and adding, adding new lines. <laughs> so what were, the, what were the differences between those sessions? Uh, well, the first one, honestly, I think I, I'm pretty sure I just walked in there and was like, you know, <laughs> did a couple of his lines and then was gone. And then this next time I came in, there was like 12 people on the phone, and they were like, that's not it, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like really making sure, and then they, they actually had a video of him and doing like gang style and stuff on yeah. there. And they were like, just, you know, make gang style noises. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 I'm not going to ask you to do this, you don't have a room anyway. Thank you. <laughs> but then also for the uh, cinematic thing that we flew down to LA for, it was one of the funniest things. It took us forever to get to LA. They fly us in there, they pick us up, they drive us to the studio, we sit there and wait, walk in, and I literally went, <laughs> and they're like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and speaking, so you didn't realize you were, you were TF for a while. No idea. But um, Gavin, I think you had a similar sort of case. We did this panel last year, you were with us, and I remember we had the little, the little video show for everyone, and Pantheon wasn't on that intro video. No, I have no idea. How, when did you find out? The only way I found out, somebody brought it up, probably Adam. Adam probably told me, I think this is you. And then it was I, Stefanos again. And I listened, I listened to it, and I'm like, God, Something Adam Stefanos figured out. Sorry, I had no idea. And this was like sometime within the past year. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. And then those were the, the, it was a very early game, so like five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's important. Sure. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah let's, just, let's do some five years or something. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, it, I guess, you know, we're lucky in this business. If we're working a lot, we don't really remember or process to keep very good track of it. So it's kind of like, oh, cool. Yeah. I guess that was the <laughs> So let's also, um, so let's talk about the newcomer system. Let's talk a little bit about Vibe, let's talk a little bit about Karma. So, at this point, when, when you two go into Record Your Lines, now it's little well, well, a pretty big, reasonably large phenomenon. Uh, was it on your radars at all going into it? Um, yeah, I knew about the game a little bit, I didn't play it. Um, we'll get the point. <laughs> but um, I definitely connected, and when I got the script, I thought, wow, what a powerful woman, and what a powerful opportunity, and I connected with her spiritually, because how she feels spiritually, I feel. And practicing kind of the spirituality from within, that's your power. And so I love that about Karma. And you, you also came in to do your, so you came in, for the second voice in Karma. Mm -hmm. So she did the, he went through the was um, Daniel. Daniel. Daniel Murray. Oh, Daniel Murray. Mm -hmm. And did you, did it, did it feel kind of odd to come in to do a, a revoice after, after being around for so long? Not really, because, you know, like I said, I auditioned for it and got it. So I assume <laughs> that was a lot yeah, of Yeah, AJ. <laughs> and <the> story. <laughs> right, and I know they didn't really ask me to reference her. At all, they asked me to read what they had written and directed me as such, and so leaving there feeling content with what the director wanted. You know, I feel like, well, that must have been it. You know. Yeah. And then now we move over to Vi, which uh, was one of like, the first two champions where Vi is like, let's start really expanding on some storylines for the characters. Let's do some really extensive yeah, stuff. Did that reflect itself in the? Uh, in the recording process? Very much so. Uh, when I went into the session, they actually explained a lot of her backstory to me, 
which was really great. Um, it was nice to know where she came from. It was nice to know that she was a little rough and tumble and kind of on the wrong side of the tracks, but that she did have some kind of a moral ethic. I mean, it's, it's of her own making, but she does have one. Um, and so, yeah, that really helped inform the character. Um, I had a similar experience with Rashida when I first saw the script. A lot of times when the auditions come in, you, know, you, you do them and you put them away, and if you get it, great, you know, and if you don't, it wasn't your role. This one came in, and I saw the art, and I read the lines, and my husband is also my engineer sometimes when I audition, and I told him at the end of it, I was like, okay, if I don't get this fucking role, there's something wrong with the world. <laughs> she is me. <laughs> and I was like, yep, that's my role. <laughs> so then we went into the uh, recording session, and, and they did, they gave us some backstory on who she is. And uh, we just started recording the lines, and it was so great. It was, it's to date one of the funnest, most awesome recording experiences I've ever had. And when you know you're doing a great job when you feel good doing the lines, but then the 12 people that are on the phone are laughing their asses off. <laughs> well, that could be good or really bad. Right. <laughs> In this case, it was good. But yeah, I had no idea of the power of the game before I went into the session. And it was really funny because I actually ran into you a couple weeks after at a different recording studio doing another one of those Russian games. And um, he was like, hey, you're in league, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you have no idea what you're in for. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> And now realizing how huge it is, and my husband plays the game a lot too, and follows the tournaments and stuff, and I'm just like, holy crap, this is really big. I saw an article where Riot was like, it's the most played game in the world, and I'm like, okay, yeah, right. Now I'm like, no, holy shit, this is the most played game in the world. One of the cases where literally actually means literally. literally. Yeah. Where are they in active subscribers now? What's that? You know where they are in active subscribers? It's a really big number. <laughs> 30 million is the last item. Let's, uh, let's keep going through like, the, uh, the storylines and recordings because we also have both Darius and Draven. <laughs> Brothers, what? Oh, Darius! <laughs> <laughs> so it was, well, for, well, first off, do we have you to do your sessions considering your characters are related? Were they relatively close to each other? Do you know? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Um, I, I, as a matter of fact, when I was doing Draven, there was a line in there, and they were like, well, this guy Darius is your brother. And I was like, okay. And one of the lines was like, oh, I'm Darius. Because they told me that of the two brothers, there was Darius, who's raw, and then there was Draven, who's like, you know, the ass. So, um, the big heel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there was, there was lines in there that, that, that sort of said something about it. And there was a little bit of talk about how they were brothers. Yeah. 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 Did they have you do anything? Like Draven specific life, because your character came first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's, here's the thing. My first awareness of Draven kind of coincided with my first awareness of what a phenomenon this game had been, because I also did my audition right about when the crust of the earth was cooling. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I, I sort of I sort of forgot about it. And then uh, all of a sudden, what, five, six years later, you know, Eric and I are meeting in LA to do the same effort sounds thing, you know, effort sounds thing. <laughs> You're swinging a mace, yeah! You're taking a hit, boom! Okay. That's, that's, that's what, that's what we, had a, we had a session in LA and we met on that. And it was only then that I became aware of Draven, that I became aware of the fact that this game was big. I went into that session not remembering what I did for the guy. <laughs> That's so it was, was Eric who pointed out, it was Eric who pointed out, first off, there are video collections now there, you go to YouTube, and you, can find, you can find a video compilation of your own sound bites. But, on the way to finding my sound bites, my personal sound bites, I found a player who did impressions. Looked a little bit like you, actually, if you don't mind me pointing that out. But, <laughs> he, did, he did impressions of the characters. And I swear the guy did it better than I did. <laughs> you know, so that's 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 an eye opener. That's that's a wake up call. You know, when you got when you got when 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 there's such profusion in reaching the game that you got people performing the role better than you do. You know, that's that that's something. I guess let's also move over to uh, I'll move over to Brian for a second because you mentioned earlier that uh, you were originally the announcer. Yeah. So how did how did that come 
talking about, and also just because you did also a lot of the very early champions as well. I did. Uh, the announcer, I believe, was a role just like any of the others. We auditioned for certain roles. Uh, selections were made. We came in. We uh, we recorded, uh, as uh, Adam said, at uh, Somatone. Back in the days when we were in the corner next to the drum set and the guitars. <laughs> um, and now they're, this, now they're this fantastic studio. Yeah. Uh, but the original, I guess it was the, the beta announcer. Uh, so it was, uh, Pentakill was the original. <laughs> oh my god, you killed somebody! <laughs> I, think I, I think I have it at that one. I don't know if I it in the game. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a shooting app. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we, we approach the roles uh, like any other. You know, we're, if you have to kind of uh, draw a simile, we're, if you're building a house, the house is the video game, there are many different contractors that come in and help you build that house. And as voice actors, you know, we're coming in and we're doing yeah. the electrical wallpaper. <laughs> we're doing the wallpaper. Absolutely. And, and once we're done with our job, we move on to the next house. Uh, we approach the, the, the jobs professionally. We want to make sure that we get the best performance we possibly can. But once we're done with it, we move on and other people uh, uh, make these games what they are. Certainly, <laughs> you folks make these games what they are. And I've ultimately said that I work for you guys. Uh, because if you don't like my performance, I'm probably not coming back. Um, so thank you for letting me continue. To Summoners rock! Exactly. But the process is, it's a creative process and that's what we do. So, uh, whenever we get a character, whenever we get an audition, you know, we'll look at it. In uh, Trindamir, for example, uh, I was told that Trindamir basically gets all this power from being pissed off all the time. <laughs> Which is one of those great things that as an actor you can really hang your hat on. So, I'm thinking to myself when we're auditioning this, who's the most pissed off guy on the planet? Right? Oh, New York cab driver, right? Hey, shut up! Get in the back of the car! Come on, let's go downtown, right? So if you do that voice, and then you lower it a little bit, and you take the accent off, you've got the Barbarian King! <laughs> so all of these wonderful things that we listen to every day as actors that we observe every day, we take and we use little bits and pieces of that uh, to bring these characters to vocal life, because that's what uh, I think there's a similar process to finding the voice of uh, Ash as well, a little bit more. Like, how, how was your process of finding Ash? It's basically my voice, but like, I generally when I talk, like what I'm talking right now, I, yeah, I, I sound like a dork. <laughs> like, I don't hear my voice on like answering machines because you know we all have answering machines still. But you, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh my god, do I sound like that? That's horrible. So basically, with Ash, she's just she's sexier. She's more sultry. So it's, I really didn't have to go that far. I yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right, in, in game, Trimmer and Ash, yeah. That's, oh, right. That's, right. that's right. That's why they're sitting together. Yes, this worked out perfectly. Then. Perfect, yeah. you frosty bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The high mood is old pop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, for me, it's, it, it's cool too, because I, I Generally, um, I do a lot of like kids' voices and stuff, which I love, which is awesome. Way more character work. So when I when I book a role and, and it's actually a strong female voice, then I'm just like, ooh, that's so comfortable and it feels good. And I kind of wish that I talked like that all the time, but then it would just be weird. Like, I'd like a tall latte, please. <laughs> With whole milk. Don't fuck around. <laughs> Melissa is also Clementine in the Walking Dead series, by the way. I, I want to get this next question out of the way because I know I know it's going to come during Q&A and I know there's a lot of hilarious stories that come with this. Let's talk about actually playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> there's stories, aren't there? Someone's got to have stories about actually trying to play this game. They're all sitting on this side of the table. I'll just bow out now. I, I will. <laughs> that is I, I am extremely lucky that I get paid to voice characters in video games. If I was paid to play video games, I would be sleeping in a cardboard box behind the <laughs>
Much, much, much. Yoga behind you. Hee 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 hee. 